My guest says the international political tit for tat over oil prices may be just a big game, that the dollar will fall and oil prices will jump. Before we know it, we're also going to talk about gold and how it affects this. Here to discuss is Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me about this. Now, let's start with some numbers. U.S. crude rose 1.4%, settling at a 4504. A report shows a drop in European stockpiles. OPEC fails to have impact. You think it could drop under 40? Well, look, it's, it's been under 40. It could certainly go again, under 40 again. Yeah. But I think regardless, I think oil is in the process of forming a major bottom, just like I think the U.S. dollar is in the process of forming a major top. And, you know, the dollar today closed near a seven-month low, uh, it, it, but it's still not too far from a 14-, 15-year high. So it's a long way down to go when it comes to the dollar. And as the dollar goes down, uh, that is going to be very bullish for the price of oil. All right, well, uh, dollar is going to drop, as you say. It's great for emerging economies, though. So how, how do you think they're going to react to this? As, as you say, you know, it's, it's going to drop. Sort of a fatalistic approach to this, in my opinion. But how do you think this is going to affect them? Well, the emerging markets will benefit from a fall in the dollar. I mean, number one, a lot of the emerging markets are exporters of commodities. And a lot of commodities, not just oil, are going to catch a bid from the falling dollar, so that's going to help their exports. But, you know, a lot of the emerging market economies have a lot of U.S. dollar-denominated debt. Right. And as the dollar loses value, that's basically like having a portion of their debt forgiven. It becomes a lot easier to repay the debt. It becomes a lot easier to service the debt. And that frees up resources. It frees up purchasing power uh, for emerging market uh, consumers to spend money on other things. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's a boom uh, for the rest of the world. Okay, well, gold's effect on this. I know gold's a uh, pet topic for you. Uh, how do you think it's going to have an effect on this? I mean, look, we're having a major surge in output. OPEC is scrambling to catch up to those cuts. Libya and Nigeria don't have caps right now. OPEC might cap those. The U.S., we're talking upwards of, of 9 million barrels a day. Gold's effect on all this. Well, you know, gold is, uh, you know, going to trade with oil. And I do believe that, uh, you know, oil, the, the diminished demand is a function of the strength of the dollar. It's going to be a very different picture in the oil market once the dollar weakens. And I think also gold uh, has, uh, you know, been hurt by the perception that the global increase in interest rates is going to be bearish for gold. Also, gold has had a strong correlation with the Japanese yen over the last couple of years, and the yen has weakened, and that has also dragged down the price of gold. But the Japanese yen is not really going to determine the value of gold, the idea that they're both safe havens, and for a while they were, you know, the, the, the same type of trade. I think that gold is the real safe haven. I don't see a lot of safety in the Japanese yen. Uh, and so I do think that ultimately gold will be the last safe haven standing. And as people start to realize uh, that the U.S. economy is in much worse shape than is generally perceived by the markets or is certainly acknowledged by the Fed, as the U.S. economy continues to weaken, as the Fed is forced to admit that the tightening cycle is over and a new easing cycle is going to begin, as inflation begins to move higher, despite the fact that the U.S. economy uh, moves into recession, I think you're going to see a perfect storm when it comes to gold. And I think you're going to see tremendous buying coming in. A lot of people are still short. They still don't understand the real predicament that the U.S. economy is in. And when this picture becomes clearer to more people, uh, the price of gold is going a lot higher. Let's talk about this, these political cases. You know, you've got OPEC, you've got its affiliates. There's going to be a meeting in St. Petersburg in Russia coming up uh, in just a couple of weeks. OPEC is trying to hit out and find a way to balance output. The U.S. says, hey, we're going to do, you know, we're fracking, we're drilling, we're going gangbusters. The U.S. is still importing. There's a lot that isn't talked about with regard to these, this output and the glut. So do you think this political tit for tat between these member countries in the United States is is addressed enough or do you think it's just sort of you know smoke and mirrors well probably more more of the latter but you know I know that a lot of the the OPEC countries there are low-cost producers of oil and they certainly want to maintain the fear in the global oil markets that 
prices are going to fall because they want to discourage more exploration and production coming from other areas like the United States. And so to the extent that uh, producers are on edge, uh, that lenders are worried about a potential fall in oil prices, then they're not going to want to lend and people are not going to want to make the investments in the sector. So all of that ultimately benefits uh, bigger, you know, producers like OPEC to the extent that uh, you don't have the future supply because people are gun shy about committing resources because they're afraid that the price of oil could collapse at any moment. All right. Thank you so much for weighing in on this. Uh, very important to keep uh, track of all this. Thank you so much. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital.